uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So we'll be looking at pre-fertilization uh, pre events and one of them is spermatogenesis. So it's a process that actually occurs within the seminiferous tubules and allows the human male to form mature spermatozoa. It's a process that will begin at puberty and will last through the whole lifetime of the human male. So it takes about two months to form a single sperm and the most efficient temperature for this process is about 34 degrees centigrade and the developing sperms will actually be supported by what we call the Sertoli cells. So the steps in the formation of the mature spermatozoa are usually divided into eight steps. So the first one is the differentiation of the primordial germ cells to give you spermatogonia which are divided into type A and type B. Now the type B are the ones that actually undergo mitotic division to give you primary spermatocytes. And so the formation of primary spermatocytes is what we call primary spermatocytogenesis. Now the primary spermatocytes then undergo meiosis 1 to give you secondary spermatocytes, which what we call secondary spermatocytogenesis. Now the whole process of formation of spermatocytes up to the level of the secondary is known as spermatocytogenesis in general. Okay, so you can, you can collapse uh, step 3 and 4 into spermatocytogenesis. Now, the next step is spermatidogenesis, where you have meiosis 2 occurring, and so the secondary spermatocyte undergoes uh, changes, okay, to give you a spermatid. Now, spermatid is the precursor to the, to the spermatozoa, though it is uh, oval or round-shaped. And so it must undergo morphological changes to give you a spermatozoa. And so those changes are known as spermiogenesis. And so these are the parts of a mature sperm that you want. You get the head, okay? And so the head has had the cytoplasm removed, okay? And so this is the work of the Sertoli cell, okay? And then you have the neck being formed at this point. Then you have the acrosome cup here. And so the acrosome cup contains acrosomal enzymes. And so this is formed by Golgi apparatus uh, repackaging. Then you have the middle piece, which is uh, formed by the mitochondria. Okay, so the mitochondria are usually packed in the middle piece. And then the central contributes to the formation of this tail. Okay, so the Y is the principal piece of the tail, and the Z is the end piece of the tail. So in summary, spermiogenesis is where you have the Golgi apparatus allowing you to form the acrosomal cup with its enzymes. And then the middle neck piece is formed and packed with mitochondria. The central elongates to form the tail and there is phagocytosis of excess cytoplasm by Sertoli cells. And then there is also the condensation of the nucleic material at uh, the level of the head. So the chromatin condenses within the uh, head. Now, spermiation is the male version of ovulation. Ideally what you have is the spermatozoa being produced within the seminiferous tubules will be released within a system of tubes known as the rete testis. Okay, So this rete testis will allow the spermatozoa to go all the way to the head of the epididymis. Now the spermatozoa being produced at the level of the seminiferous tubules are immortal. They are not able to move. And so what usually happens is there is a lot of fluid that is produced within the tubular system. And so this fluid is reabsorbed by the epithelium of the epididymis. So the epithelium of the epididymis has apical specializations uh, known as stereocilia. And so the stereocilia will absorb this fluid. Okay, so the stereocilia uh, within this epithelium will absorb the fluid. And so that creates a vacuum effect, okay? So there's suction of more fluid carrying the immortal spermatozoa to the head of the epididymis. So this connection here between the testes and the head of the, and the epididymis here, these tubules are known as the efferent ductules, okay? And so the spermatozoa will go all the way to the head of the epididymis. Now, at this point, uh, two things usually occur. One, there is temporary storage. So usually they are kept here for about... Uh, 64 days okay so 64 days that translates to about two months okay and uh, within that time there is also what we call decapacitation so the spermatozoa are usually uh, capped with a glycoprotein coat 
So the head of the spermatozoa is added onto it uh, a glycoprotein coat that hides its receptors. Okay, so these receptors will only be activated within the female reproductive tract. Okay, and so the process of removing that coat of glycoprotein from the head of the spermatozoa to reveal the receptors of the spermatozoa is known as capacitation. And that is what allows the spermatozoa to be able to find the, their way to the ovum. Okay, and so this uh, process here okay, is known as spermiation. So the movement of this spermatozoa all the way to the uh, head of the epididym is okay. Now there are some common uh, sperm disorders that uh, may occur. Okay, here you can be able to see normal morphology of the sperm. But here you can be able to see abnormal morphology. You can be able to see an abnormally sized giant spermatozoa. You can be able to see a very small a microspermatozoa. You can be able to see a spermatozoa with two heads. One is a bifid tail. One is a very long head. One is a very rough head. One is an abnormal middle neck piece. And so usually when you, when you go through the process of semen analysis, you can be able to pick these sperm disorders. And so what we've just seen here is known as teratospermia, where you have abnormal morphology of the spermatozoa. Then the next one is aspermia, where you basically don't have semen being produced. Now, hypospermia is where the volume of semen uh, is reduced. It's less than 1.5 milliliters. Then oligospermia is where the count of the spermatozoa is below 15 million uh, sperms. Then azospermia is where you have no sperm count at all. And astenozospermia is where you have a, an immobile or an immortal spermatozoa. So the spermatozoa is produced, but it's not able to swim. So thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, you can be able to leave them on the comment section below.